Gary Payton out of Seattle Super Sonic. Sorry, Jay Peter with the Seattle Manners. Jermaine Curse, the favorite. Nate Burleson. You're watching NorCam. NorCam. You're watching NorCam. What's up, everybody? This is NorCam coming at you live here on a Wednesday evening. Uh, just another week in Seahawks offseason. More changes, more strength going to the L.A. Rams with big signings this past week. And it's going to be interesting. But I am forever the Seahawk optimist. So uh, we can get into that, see what's up. I see the live chat busted up here. We got Brandon and Oh Wow Wowson, Seahawk Fan 12. Mil, what is it? Milg Foxy, Gamer. Plushies, Brothers, Isabel Gonzalez, Taylor Made, Connor Kierfot, Vitaly Seahawks fan, R22, Devin Bray, Elena McCollum, Mitchell Parent, and uh, all of you buzzing up. Appreciate you guys chatting in here. Also, uh, if you want to be part of the conversation for the next, uh, it's going to be a short one today, less than an hour. I got some place to be at uh, six o'clock, so we're gonna make this one quick. I'm gonna get right to your calls here, see what's on your mind, and we're gonna keep this thing going. Please call in only if you have Seahawks things to talk about, because we don't have a lot of time to waste today. Okay, so uh, let's get into this thing and uh, let's see what's on people's minds. All right, let's uh, open up the line here for a second. Make sure this is technically working. All right, I think we are good. I'm going to jump right into uh, my friend over in Minneapolis, Brandon, who uh, was on before I even got live. He's been on for a few minutes already. Brandon, what's going on? Can you hear me out there? Yeah, I can hear you, Nor. What's yeah. up? What's up, Brandon? How's life over in the, uh, the land of the Twin Cities? Uh, it's fine, man. Uh, we just got some no more snow, and I had a couple snow days. Oh, really? Still more snow. And I just, I had a little bit of snow myself just a couple of days ago, coming back from the east side of the state for my daughter's volleyball tournament over in Spokane, Washington. Came over the pass, and man, it was like a blizzard. Just snow everywhere. One couple of cars flipped over. One, a pregnant woman uh, in the car had died. A really terrible, terrible accident. But uh, yeah, it's crazy. It never snows in April, uh, around here anyway. But it's all bright and sunny, or actually it's raining today, but somewhat back to normal. But uh, what's what's happening, man? What's on your mind today? Yeah, I mean, I just heard about the uh, Brandon Cooks trade mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Rams, and I was like, "Damn, bro! They they are really all in Nor. They're trying to go fourteen and two or fifteen and one. Uh, they are. Uh, they're going for it all for sure. I, I don't think any team uh, is loading up the weaponry as much as they are." Uh, it's it's pretty scary, both on the offense and the defense. Uh, I heard they were trying to go after Odo Beckham Jr. That didn't happen, but Brandon Cooks, that's pretty good too. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, they're not messing around over there in the NFC West. And nor Bill Belichick might have something up his sleeve with that trade because he got a first round pick out of that, and now they have two first round picks, so he could go for Odell if he wanted to. Yeah, no, they definitely got some leverage there uh, with that pick. They can uh, bargain with that pick or just take it if they got somebody early in the rounds that they're looking for. You never know what uh, sneaky Belichick has got on his mind. But uh, I'm more concerned about what's going on in the NFC West. And uh, I guess the only thing I can say about that is, you know, you just never know. With so many personalities, so many big-name free agents uh, coming into one team like that, uh, you just never know. I mean, you never know how well that's going to be managed. I know Sean McVay was a really good coach last year, coach of the year, I believe, turning things around from a losing organization under Jeff Fisher and uh, got them into the playoffs in his first year. So we'll see if he can, you know, the real thing will be in, in year two is Jared Goff the real deal is Sean McVay going to be able to handle all these different players in there, you know, and get this thing still working. So. But, uh, you know, can't deny it. it's yeah. definitely a scary situation. Yeah, but, I mean, the 49ers haven't done anything recently. Well, not recently, but they've also, you know, definitely have improved uh, yeah. a few things on their side of the ball, not to mention, you know, so much stock being put into, um, you know, Jimmy G, who they all hope uh, is the new savior for the 49ers. The only time will tell. 
You had five games. I know people want to like to hear it called five meaningless games at the end of the season, but they were five games that really weren't under any kind of pressure and nobody had any expectations really uh, as far as the team at that point. So now throw that the opposite way. Ton of expectations on the Rams, ton of expectations on the 49ers, and zero expectations on the Seahawks. So I think I like it. I like that. I like that. I like it that way. The fact that we are um, going to be back to our sort of underdog role as opposed to being looked at as a team that's you know expected to go out there and, and do something. So the target will not be on our backs for the first time. But we'll see. You know, just because you got the dream yeah. team on paper doesn't mean it's going to be a dream team uh, in reality. You got to play the games first. So we shall we shall see. But I know a lot of Seahawks fans are very nervous and concerned. Have, and, and some who I know personally have already written off the season, which is pretty funny to me because I haven't even had the draft yet. But, you know, it's just with all these names, big names coming by and landing in other people's, uh, on the NFC West, other teams, it's got people definitely freaked out a little bit. So we'll see. You know, I'm confident. I just have this feeling that things are going to be all right. We're not going to be as bad as everybody thinks we're going to be, you know. So... We shall see. Yeah. Anyway, well, thanks for calling, man. Yeah, how was your last year? You yeah, went man. over to, uh, uh, you were down in LA, right, last week? Yeah. You enjoyed the rest of your there. trip? You and enjoyed the rest of your trip down there? Yeah, I just got back a couple days ago, so. Ah. Yeah. All right. Back to the snow, back to the Midwest. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this thing along, get to the calls, but I appreciate it, man. Thanks for being the first one on here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, always, man. We'll talk again soon, all right? All right. All right. Take it easy, man. All right. Let's go from the Midwest all the way over to the east side of the, of the uh, continental United States. I'm talking about New York City. That could only mean gang green. David, what's up, David? How you doing, man? What's going on, Norb? I'm actually not in New York. I'm actually in Utah. Utah? What are you doing down there? Yeah. Uh, this is apparently a family vacation, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm here in Utah, and all right. All right, that's cool. Well, um, family vacation in Utah. What's the big What's the big uh, attraction down in Utah? What are you guys doing down there? Uh, it's a lot of the national parks. I mean, apparently there's a lot of national parks in Utah. There's places like Bryce Canyon, which oh, I yeah. think is a pretty nice view. Um, there's also Zion National Park, which I'm at right now. I'm just hanging out in my hotel and whatnot. Um, and also we were in Arizona um, where we were hanging out in Sedona. We were in a little town called Page, saw a nice canyon over there. And I even, on my flight, I saw the stadium where the Seahawks, ended up getting robbed at their Super Bowl. So kind of an interesting <laughs> spring break so far. Uh, you had to bring that up, yeah. Um, well, that's cool. I'm glad you're enjoying your spring break and everything. So what do you got What do you got for me, man? What, fo- what kind of football can we talk about today? Well, it's on your the, mind. Brandon Coach trade, the Brandon Cooks trade benefits me as much as it hurts you. I'm, listen, the Rams may have gotten another weapon, and you guys now have another deadly weapon to deal with in the NFC West. But... Since he was a Patriot, that just deals with one less wide receiver. So now you have Amendola and you have Cooks gone. And in the AFC East, the only receivers now that are roaming around in New England are Edelman, Hogan. Uh, you want to count Dorsett, that's fine. And then there, there's other question marks, too, over there. Well, even though New England's always a deadly team. But, however, on the NFC West side of the ball, I mean... Who are you fearing? Are you fearing the Rams a lot this year, considering the fact that the last time that you guys played them, they blew you guys out like forty-two to seven, which mm-hmm. I thought would have never happened. Yeah, well, um, I, I I have to say the Rams because of that very fact that you mentioned. I mean, now, now I have ex- you know I have explanations as to why that happened, and uh, the. In that particular game, particularly missing Bobby Wagner and Bobby Wagner playing on a you know, half a hamstring uh, certainly didn't help our team. But that was just one of those fluky things where everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And I bet if we were to play again, uh, you know, that game again, it wouldn't be that score. We not I'm not saying we're going to beat them or demo, you know demolish them or anything like that. But I think that was just a flukish thing where everything went wrong all at once. But 
Yeah, Rams definitely the most formidable opponent at this point with the you know the way that they've uh, just that scary defensive line of theirs. You know, having some pros all there in the back uh, defensive backfield, the offensive weaponry which has only improved from one of the top offenses last year. So you know, uh, it's hard to not think. You know, how is it? What's it going to take to stop these guys? You know, so yeah, definitely the Rams well, are my I mean, biggest concern at this point for sure. Oh yeah, but their their draft their draft picks are gone. I mean, they're not picking, I believe, till the eighty seventh pick in the draft. So you don't have any really young talent to worry about regards to the Rams. I mean, right now it's a bit of an unknown as to whether anyone's going to go down for the season or go down for a significant amount of time, or whether there'd be any inactives for the Rams playing with you guys. Whatever the case may be. But the Rams do look extremely deadly. And I, for one, am glad that I'm not playing them or in their division. I mean, either way, it wouldn't be much of a big deal anyway because we have the Patriots in our division and we have to play them twice a year and they always take division. So, really, we would have to rely on a wild card hopes every year, which is which is unbelievable. But once Brady retires, the fact that they just got rid of their future in Garoppolo, we'll see what happens. But yeah. I'm just waiting till I'm just waiting till the draft now. Whether it's going to be a reaction of joy or whether I'm probably going to end up fainting right there at MetLife Stadium because I'm going to be at the draft party nice. for the Jets because of, of how important and huge this draft is for us. A lot of Jet fans are probably going to end up posting their reaction. I know I will be per se. I'm going to post mine on YouTube. Might do a live stream at the at the draft party. It's yeah. gonna be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah. And no, I'm but, looking. I, I'm looking. I personally am looking forward to seeing your reaction when when they go at number three. And see what they get. It's uh, it's definitely in the spotlight. So it's got it's kind of cool that way. But uh, so real quick, last thing. So talking about uh, Brandon Cooks, you 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 face the Patriots twice a year. You saw him twice last year. What what should we worry about with Brandon Cooks? What did he do to you guys when well, uh, you guys when your Jets played him? Well, for one, it's his route tree because. The way he runs his route tree, he just is extremely explosive on pretty much a lot of the routes he runs, whether it's across in the middle of the field or whether it's a vertical route downfield. But one way or another, you have a quarterback with an arm and accuracy like Goff or even Brady, as a matter of fact. I mean, you get that ball in his hand, he's gone. He's a very, very deadly receiver. And honestly, I would I would watch out because if whoever – whatever corner is covering someone like Brandon Cooks, if if you can't match up with him on whether it's the deep ball, the crossing route, expect him to be gone. And plus, the Rams also have guys like Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. And Robert Woods, I think, is definitely going to be an emerging talent, too, that you have to watch out for. And the, the other thing you have to worry about with the Rams is they're surprisingly third and long, whether it's from 20 to 30-yard conversions, they're a very unpredictable team, especially now with the talent that they've picked up. So it's going to be very interesting to watch this team. They, I think they can even go for a divisional run at least. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they got it last year, so they're going to be the defending NFC, uh, NFC West champs. And uh, obviously the favorite, probably one of the favorite teams to uh, take the NFC, at least on paper at this point. But... That's all right. I'll let them take the, you know, let them have the spotlight. It doesn't bother me. It's totally cool. I just, I have this feeling that not, not rarely do things on paper work out as everywhere you think they're going to. And so, you know, I'm kind of counting on that. Um, you know, what do you think about this talk that uh, um, Gronkowski may be possibly leaving the Patriots or maybe retiring? Oh, my God. You must be thrilled. You must be thrilled at this exodus of uh, names that you've had to deal with for the last <laughs> well, few years. I mean, I'm not. I mean, whatever the media is thrown out there, whatever the clickbait is, I'm. I will be extremely ecstatic if Rob Gronkowski is gone. I will be extremely thrilled. I will be happy. But if I don't. I don't see it happening. I think really it's just all clickbait. I think the media is just trying to get some clicks for the little articles. I mean, it, it, it's just a lot of ridiculous rumors. So you think he's? So you think he'll be back? What? You think he'll be back? In other words, I think he could. He'll probably be back. I, I don't think the. I think the hype's just building up. I yeah. mean, he's a very important player. I mean, who are you? If, who are you going to replace a guy like Rob Gronkowski with? 
a guy like him is very hard to replace. Oh, I mean, it's it was just a really good question. Does Gronkowski not want to be there anymore? If you believe the stories of the you know the Seth Wickersham ESPN article about the turmoil within the the Patriots organization, and which is you know fueled by what happened with. Um, Malcolm Butler not being played during the Super Bowl and him leaving and other you know uh, teammates also leaving you know and if there's any truth to this whole thing about the Robert Kraft Tom Brady Bill Belichick you know controversy not getting away with each other um, you know maybe there is some uh, trouble in paradise over there and maybe this is the beginning of the end but I mean we know the beginning of the end is very close at some point Brady's going to retire I don't see I, Belichick spend, you know, sticking around much longer. Jets might have their chance to win. The Jets season. might have their chance. Hey, this we we could be on the wide open. We could be on the precipice of a turning point, a a, a paradigm shift, if you will, trading a power where the Patriots finally drop from their high throne and the J E T S Jets 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 come roaring in with their number three pick, whatever the heck that's going to be, and uh, end up. The tops of the the uh, AFC that's East. That's what makes our. That's what's going to make our general manager that number three pick. <laughs> that it's three pick. it is man. I mean, there's only so many choices, but oh, you pick behind door one, number one, door number two, or door number three. You pick the wrong door, it could ruin you for I'll years. A if, if the New York Jets draft Josh Allen at number three, expect me. To walk to the nearest wall of the stadium and probably bang my head into the wall as hard as I could, and probably just hope I don't remember this whole thing. I'm just make so. sure you're live streaming at the moment you do that, so that at least you'll have <laughs> suffered some kind of a concussion and at least record it so it can go viral and you get something out of it. All right, and especially our it's joy. Gonna be, it's going to be absolute chaos at the Jets draft, Josh Allen. It's going to be ridiculous. But I'm looking at guys like Rosen or Mayfield because I think Darnold's going to be. Uh, the number one draft pick, and really it's just going to come down to those two guys. Yeah. Baker Mayfield is my guy. I like Rosen, but I like what Mayfield brings to the table. Yeah. Well, we will continue to talk about the draft in the weeks to come. Lots of lead up to it. But, hey, man, I'm going to get this thing. I got, I got people in the chat like James Watson saying, you need to keep the calls moving along. So uh, I'm going to do that because I got a short time today. So I appreciate the uh, call yeah. all the way from, what, Zion National Park down there in Utah? Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your spring break, and I appreciate you taking the time to call me from uh, way down there in Utah. Enjoy the rest of it, man. <laughs> of course, Nor. Have a good one. Man. All right. You too. Talk to you later. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go to uh, Nicholas, who's been waiting a long time. Nicholas in Tacoma. Yo, what's up, Nicholas? How you doing? Hey, You're on with Nor Cam. Cam. What's up? How's it going? It's going good. You are live. Let's talk some football, man. We got a short amount of time and only so much, uh, you know, Seahawks football we could talk about. So let's hear what you got. What's on your mind? Well, first off, I actually never thought that I was talking to somebody who used to be an actual football player. Oh, who would that be? You. <laughs> well, I don't. I, uh, I I guess I was a football player, but way back in the day, we're talking high school. It's been a long time since then, but uh, yeah, I used to uh, run the old pigskin back in the day. But yeah, no, no, I appreciate that, man. So, but what you what you got, man? What you got on your mind here? Uh, talking Seahawks. Mm, well, I'm not quite sure if I have any Seahawks questions, but. Uh, I absolutely do remember the Brandon Cooks trade. Uh, yes, that uh, that was pretty big. I mean, everyone was thinking that it was going to be uh, Odell Beckham Jr. It didn't turn out to be that, but Brandon Cooks, that's a pretty big deal too. So, you know, uh, we're going to have to be dealing with him uh, for sure. It's going uh, to be lots of fun. It's going to be lots of fun. Yeah, and I only knew three people from the Patriots, and, and those were Brady, the Cooks, and Gronk. Uh, yeah. Well, there's also Amendola, Julian Edelman. Those are a few other uh, guys that, uh, you know, names were somewhat household. But, yeah, no, that's a big one. You know, he had a 1,000-yard season last year. I was surprised that they'd uh, move him. But you never know what Belichick's up to. That guy does a lot of sneaky things that just don't always make sense on the outside. And then you see what he does later on. And so very diabolically clever. So, 
Yeah, we'll see. We're going to have our hands full. Our secondary is going to be very busy, but we're going to need to give our D-line some time. D-line's got to get in there, give our secondary some time so we can get some pass rush so that uh, Jerry Goff won't have time to throw to these guys because they're going to have some guy up in his face knocking him senseless uh, while he's uh, trying to find his target. So that's what we're going to have to do. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Anyway. Well, sometime earlier this week, I think it was yesterday, I actually got my very own baseball glove. Like baseball mitt? Uh, Yeah, and it has a name written on it with marker. Okay. Well, that's cool. The name that's on the glove, the name that's on the glove is Deshaun Houston. Deshaun Houston? Um, well, (laughs) Well, that's cool, man. So you're, uh, you're playing baseball this spring. That's awesome. So, well, that's cool, man. I'm going to keep this thing rolling because i got a short amount of time, so I'm going to have to cut you off at this point. But I appreciate your call. Thanks for the, uh, the visit. And we'll talk to you next week or next, next uh, Norb Cam, all right? All right. See you next right. week and go all Hawks. Right. Go Hawks, yeah. All right, let's go to, uh, let's see, this is an unfamiliar number. Let's go to the 425. What's up? Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hello, my name is Jacob. I'm calling from Bellingham, Washington. Jacob, first time caller? Yes, sir. All right, man. What's up? What's going on? Oh, not much. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. You got a question? So, uh, what's on my mind about the Seahawks, I'd say, well, there's a lot going on, right? No, but um, seems like the Rams and the 49ers are stacking up, and the Seahawks have been awful quiet. But we could talk about that all day. But what I'm more interested in is who they're going to draft and whether you think um, – or what what you what positions you think they should draft in? A lot of people want O line, of course, but you know, I, I don't know if that's obviously the, the best move for them to make at this point. I know, you know that that, that is the easy we you know draft to the the largest position of need, and everybody feels like that's going to be uh, you know offensive line. But I don't know. Let me turn it on you for a second. What do you think? What do you think we should uh, draft? You know, honestly, I would look into a running back because I'm not totally convinced on Mike Davis and from what we've seen Chris Carson look good but you know it's just such a small sample of games I'm not convinced that he's going to be the next you know Marshawn Lynch or whatever yeah no I agree I I do believe we need to draft I don't know if we necessarily go first round with the running back Um, I feel like that even though it's the easy cliche answer I would still feel good if they were to draft an offensive lineman in the first round uh, just because, man, we need you know, Russell needs some protection. And while I feel yeah, like absolutely. they've made they've made some moves in the off season to address the line, which I I like what they've done. You know, there's no names in there that really just get you completely just yeah. you know knocked off your socks. Like, oh yeah, we got him. You know, we got some names in there. And of course, we got Dwayne Brown, who's I'm glad we got him over there left tackle. But it'd be nice to have a guy who you just feel like is going to be someone that maybe you draft him and this guy might be around for another six, seven, eight years or more with your organization. And maybe we can get that guy in the first round. Uh, you know, I'm going to do a draft more analyzed and more prepared draft uh, analysis mock draft coming up here in the next uh, few weeks. But that's kind of my gut feel. Just, you know, there'll be other running backs to be had in later rounds. But, you know, I feel like Absolutely. I'd feel like at least we we can't com- we couldn't complain if we draft an offensive lineman. Then we can't complain that we didn't do everything we could at least to try to get the best person in there. If we start having issues at offensive line, we at least say we did our best to try to address it. So I guess that's for me psychologically. I'll feel good if we did that. So if we go linebacker, tight end, or something else, and then later on we have offensive line problems, we'll be going, man, what the hell were they doing? Not drafting an offensive lineman. We know we needed it, and uh, you know, like what happened last year, we had a perfectly good offensive lineman in the in the in the early rounds that we could have had, and we traded out of it. Got. Malik McDowell, and that blew up in our face. So we got to make up for last year's blunder of a first uh, first overall pick. My thoughts. Yeah, are, I hope McDowell's going to make it back so we can at least see him on the field this season. I would love to 
I would love to see that happen, but it just seems to me that uh, I don't know. If I were to put money on it, I don't. I don't think he's gonna be back. I mean, I have not heard a single word as to him having any kind of problem, prom, promises of him making it back to uh, to the playing field. I, I just think he's just messed up. And I'm, I'm just if he comes back, it would just be shockingly like getting a freebie. But I'm just counting him out because I still have nothing to go uh, on. Are you kind of on the same page with uh, Cliff and Cam Chancellor as well? Um, yes. Yes, I am. I'm doubtful. If I were to put on a prediction note, I'd be doubtful that those guys will play it down in 2018. Maybe not retire, but I just don't think they'll see the field this year. If they, Again, right, if they do, bad. it's a bonus. But I just, as much as I love those guys, love both of them. Cam's one of yeah. my favorite, and I've actually talked to Cliff Averill in person, did an interview with him. Oh, yeah? Great guy, yeah, yeah. I had a chance to meet him a few years back. Uh, at, I think it was at a Starbucks or something. Um, he was in there, like, signing autographs for people, and he was such a nice guy. Yeah, he's very down-to-earth and, and all that, but uh, yeah. I just yeah, feel definitely. like this is just one of those injuries where it's just too... Just too you, don't, you just don't rehab for something like this. It's not like a knee or an ankle. Brutal, or a, yeah, it's just bad, bad luck, so... We'll see. You never know. You never know. It just it would be at, uh, awesome. At this point, I just too would just want to do what's uh, best for his health. You know, he doesn't have anything more to prove, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, Camp Chancellor, happy as I was that he signed that that they signed that extension for him, it's now kind of blown up in their face because it's the worst thing in a guaranteed contract extension yeah. like this is to have the player suffer an injury that doesn't get him, allow him to get on the field, and that's sucks. Because I love watching him play. He was having one of his best games ever against the Cardinals when he had that injury and uh to just see him go down so quietly like that where it's just like what happened to him you know all of a sudden he's off the field you know and possibly never see him on the field again it's, it's, it's real unfortunate but yeah, it's a risk. big loss especially for our our, our run stopping game you know he was a big a big guy and they're helping out the linebacker oh, yeah. plugging up the holes yeah, so, but, you know towards the end of the season the run game seemed to uh pick up for other teams and Obviously, part of it is probably Bobby Wagner being not full health, but missing Cam, too, you could tell. It was a yeah. big deal. Yeah, he was a lot of the reason why uh, they shut down Adrian Peterson in that game. Uh, you know, Chancellor was in on those plays, a lot of them personally himself, all over the field, and in pass protection. Uh, it just bums me out because, yeah. uh, you know, I, I expected at least two or three more good years out of him and to have it cut short. There's, I don't know if we'll ever see a player quite like him at strong safety. He was just such a monster of a man. So. I hope he comes back, but I just don't. I just don't think it's it's in the cards personally. We'll, but we'll see. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for thanks for calling. I hope you'll call back again. I appreciate your uh, conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me on. All right, join in anytime. Appreciate it. Go Hawks. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see. Let's go to uh, let's go to the five hundred nine. I have an inkling who this might be. What's up over there on the eastern side of Washington? Hello. Hello, Norm. This is not who I was expecting. Oh, okay, who is this? And where are you calling from? This is, uh, yes, this is Clayton Smith. Clayton from, are you calling from Spokane or in that area? Yeah. Okay. It's Yakima. Yeah, oh, Yakima, all right. Okay, um, what's on yeah. your mind, man? Yeah, yeah you're, you're over there with uh, Anthony D's neck of the woods. You, ever, you know Anthony D personally over there in Yakima? <laughs> I do not. I'm actually not originally <laughs> from here. Oh, okay. Anyway, so. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Just because like someone's from the same city, everyone assumes everybody knows everybody. Hey, Yakima, yeah, don't you know my friend? Anyway, uh, what's up, Clayton? What's on your mind, man? What you got? Hey, um, I'm just going to say, you know, like, can you hear me good? I'm sorry. What'd you say? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, good. This, this phone's kind of—it's not working very well. Oh, I can uh, hear you. Go ahead. I was gonna say. Okay, uh, I was gonna say like a lot of people are all freaking out over, you know, all this stuff about the big change and stuff, and uh, that's what happens in football. <laughs> you know, it's not like you can play for fifty years at a high level. You know. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, for um, sure. It's um, 
it's part of the reality of um, life in football. The average career is like three or four years. So when you see a guy play for like eight years or more, you're you're watching kind of an anomaly. But yeah, I know it's it's hard though. Oh, yeah, fans yeah, fans yeah. get so attached yeah. to players, and then when they have to move on, uh, it's either anger with the organization for letting him go or anger at the player for leaving because they wanted to get more money somewhere else else. But it's just the business. And any of us were, if we're in those positions, we do the same thing. So I guess I try to keep that in mind that we would all do the same thing. It's no different yeah. than taking a job and getting a raise somewhere else because yeah. they're going to pay you more, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a cutthroat business. That's just the way it is. Yep. So, and you gotta, you got they gotta make their money uh, with the small window that they can. So yeah, I do understand it. It's just hard for us. Yeah, exactly. Like a running back yeah, a, a running back only lasts, you know, like maybe three years if they're lucky. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what. But running backs surprisingly aren't a very they're not surprisingly a very valued position for some reason. Uh, I don't understand uh, how a running back gets hit all the time when he makes five to six million dollars a year when they should be making probably more than receivers, honestly. <laughs> well, I think. Um... It, it, the, the the running back position kind of goes in cycles, I've noticed, because there's some years where it seems like there's no emphasis at all on the running backs and they're completely devalued. And then you have a, a year like last year where every team in the playoffs had a good running game. And now all of a sudden, running backs are sort of back in like, oh, we got to have to run the ball in order to, you know, to, to score, to have a, you know, to go deep in the playoffs, which I do believe is something you always, always have to have. But it does seem to kind of come in waves when it's sort of like, oh, it's the quarterback and the receivers year. No, this year it's a running year oh this year is more defense you know it, it does tend to go in some a bit of trends but i think bottom line is you got to have that balance you got to be able to run the ball i mean that's what still makes the rams dangerous is yeah. you know they still got uh you know Gurley back there um you know doing his thing and yeah. you know that and so um, it's a scary attack that they got both on offense uh rushing and passing yeah it and that brings to my point with, uh, um, you know, like I really think uh, offensive line. I think we're okay. I, I really feel like that year that uh, Ethan Posick had, you know, to get all that training and the weight training to get stronger is actually going to benefit him because he is actually uh, he can start in this league at, at center easily. But they're trying to work him into guard, which is fine because he did really well at left guard. And then it moved him to the right, and something happened where he just didn't play right. I don't understand that, but I guess they're two totally different positions than other left and right guard. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know enough about the the yeah, line to really know the nuances. Right. But yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, Ethan Posick. You know, I mean, I I look up and down that line, and the only guy who I don't feel strongly well about is Jermaine Effetti. You know, most of the Seahawks fans don't because he was the most penalized player last year and we saw his name to, uh, tied to too many negative plays. So uh, that's if, the thing, like, if Fetty is, he, he can good if he can keep it composed. That's what's him in trouble. So. Uh, Clayton, I think your uh, phone just kind of crapped out on you there. So I'm sorry I have to let you go there. But I appreciate your insight, man. That was a uh, it was a good discussion. So uh, keep this thing rolling along. I appreciate you guys blowing up the chat in there. I see a lot of stuff going on between David and Atlanta. It's people trashing 49ers fans and gangrene David going at it. Brandon, it's, uh, it's lighting up in there. Keep it going. But, hey, I got David in Atlanta, I believe, on the line right now. Let me see if I can pull him up. David, is this you? The one and only, sir. That's what I figured. Hey, hey, and uh, a happy belated birthday, What's my up, friend. Brother? Happy belated birthday. When was your birthday? A few days ago, was it not? It was actually yesterday, sir. Yesterday. And I'm still waiting on my uh, entertaining video, man. What's up? Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I am I got something I haven't forgotten. Uh, as some of you may have seen, I've been doing these little music video birthday tributes, and I, I opened it up to, to um, people who shout me out and, if they want to get in on the action, uh, I said I'll make the next one and, yeah. and, and do a tribute to to several people. And I haven't forgot you, man. That's what's up, man. Despite you being yeah, on well, a Falcons look, fan and all that, I I haven't forgotten you yet. So don't don't worry. Yeah, Something's well, I coming. appreciate that, man. But look, yeah, but look. Before I get into all that, and I just say I've been busy the last couple of weeks, so I just noticed you did your show. And remember, the trip to Seattle is still in the works. Okay. You know, for later in the year, I, I'm, I'm trying to wait until the uh, NFL schedule comes out, so I'll keep you updated. 
Um, Elena McCullum in your chat. How you doing, hun? Who else said some stuff about me? The Rams. I think there's some Rams people in your chat. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. The Falcons own the Rams. Let's just go ahead and say overrated, and I know Seattle appreciates that and all, whatever. But let me ask you this, Norb. What is this thing that I heard you say? Because, like I said, I've been pretty much out of the loop. Yeah. Did you say something about the uh, Seahawks acquiring somebody? I don't remember the name you mentioned. What was going, what, what's been going on with Seattle the last week? Uh, us acquiring somebody? Um, yeah, I thought I heard something about uh, something. I could be wrong. Uh, it's been pretty quiet for us, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we, Thomas Rawls went to free agency and he's now with the Jets. I forgot to talk to Gangry David about that. Um, no, we, you know, no, no big names recently. I think kind of the focus is now moving forward to the draft, but, uh, I don't know. Are are you hinting at something that I'm missing here? I have no idea. I mean, I just could have sworn I heard something about there, but, mm, there's a couple questions that I have. First of all, yeah, I know it. Atlanta hasn't really done much done much during the off season so far. We've done we're still waiting on this Matt Ryan extension. Mm-hmm. I think that right there. And trust me, you know me, I love Matt Ryan. Okay, yeah. but I, I honestly believe that with the contracts that we paid the last couple of years to Matt Ryan, Devontae Freeman, uh, Tyson Jackson, who's no longer with the team anymore, and a couple other players, that in that that kept us from being like big players in the free agent market. Um, so, I mean, I'm wondering when he's going to get his act together, but Seattle has lost a lot of players, man. I mean, how are you feeling about, about Seattle this coming season going into the drafts and stuff? Cause y'all have lost a lot, man. Oh my God. I, it's, it's almost like every time I turn on ESPN or ESPN.com, Seattle's releasing somebody or somebody is signing somewhere else. What's going on with Seattle, man? Well, I think it's a combination of things. It, it It's really just that time where if there was ever a time to do it, this is the time to do it. Because we did, like you were saying, you know, you're like the Falcons have got, had a lot of guys tied up in expensive contracts, you know, veteran guys. Right. You know, Richard Sherman, number one on that list. You know, Earl Thomas is on that list. Uh, those are the two top right. guys. And then, you know, J- Jimmy Graham. Uh, then just th- those are the three that you know, big ones that obviously were you know, have been talked about the most. Um, right. you know, th- there were a couple of surprises of guys that we let go who weren't big, expensive guys, but you know, like the Michael Bennett thing, and there's a whole d- debate whether you don't know, get me started knew. with that, please. <laughs> don't, don't get me started with Bennett, Jesus Christ. Hey, at least you're not I, a, I, I, hey, I you am should so be furious about that, but you know, I mean, I know at one point you really oh. wanted Michael Bennett on your team, you should be counting your lucky stars that you didn't do the trade with yeah. us because look, you'd be dealing with this is, criminal Nora, issues. Look, I don't know exactly what's going on with Michael Bennett because, honestly, I've been so busy the last two weeks. I've rarely been able to finish. I mean, the Braves finally got their season started. I don't know how the Mariners are doing. They're probably going to finish last, like always. But hey, we started pretty good, pretty good actually. Yeah. We were, Did you really? I mean, we were actually, well, you know, three, four games in. We were like three and one to start the season. I think we, I don't know, I haven't seen the recent score, but uh, let's see. We were playing the San Francisco yeah, Giants. Yeah, that's pretty cool because, yeah, because the Braves are four and two. And even though, you know, you just so many games to go, it's good to start off pretty oh, yeah. good and our offense is going pretty good. But that's for another time. But all I know is that I don't know what it is. I, I can't, and, and I've been asking, you know, Pete Carroll's gum, Megan. I've been asking maybe you at one point. A couple other Seattle fans here in your chat. Again, I want to give a shout-out to Seattle 12, 12 faithful in the chat, always remembering me. I appreciate it, guys. And so many new people that are in the chat now that I don't know, Elena and a couple other people. Shout-out to you guys. Thanks for following. Make sure you sub my channel, David in Atlanta. But what is it? I thought, and I know we've talked about it the last couple of years, I thought Dan Quinn had a connection with Seattle players. What is it about, I think it was Bruce Irvin, who said two years ago he was going to come here the next year. He didn't do it, went to Oakland. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michael Bennett was rumored here for weeks. Last year, yeah. serious stuff, and he did not sign with us. Right. Is there some kind of disconnect with Seattle and Dan Quinn that I have no idea, I don't know about? Because Megan even was telling me about it. Why Why do Seattle players not want to come here? I have no idea, man. I I do not know Please of any. To me this. I I have no knowledge of any existing situation why they wouldn't, you know, uh, 
work right. out deals with them. You know, as, as far as free agency, right. you know, obviously every player can go wherever they want to. So in the end, maybe it's just right. about the maybe it's just about the money. You know, I, I think in the end it's mostly about the money, but. You know, in the right. in the in the, it's really more of a question if there's a trade deal, like the Eagles situation, right? Uh, why did they go Philly? You know, with them, was it? You know, maybe they really had this eye on this receiver they're going to get in the they, they got in the trade from you know with with Bennett. But I mean, as far as something going on, why they would be sort of anti Falcons? I think, I think you're right. taking this thing a little too personally, man. You know, Ooh, I'm guessing. I'm because, guessing you just you know the deal is probably just not as sweet over there because I I don't see any reason why a team wouldn't oh a player wouldn't want to play for Atlanta. You know, I mean, given exactly. all things being equal, uh, you know, Atlanta is a pretty decent place to play in terms of you guys got a nice stadium. You guys are uh, you know you're still in that window. Wait, wait, where wait, you wait, can wait. hold on, Nor. Did you just say Atlanta was a decent place to play? decent i said i i say that <laughs> i say that with all due respect you know you know, you know oh when, you, when you call somebody a decent human being you're not insulting them you're actually giving them props right so i'm saying it's a decent place to play yeah. um you know it's yeah, not like you're going to Atlanta cleveland a decent a decent place to play when we are a consistent playoff contender a decent oh, well i'm not going to use decent a super bowl contender and you guys can't beat us <laughs> You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I mean, I can understand those words coming out of your mouth, but I don't understand why, and, and I'll be honest, you know, through your chats and through all, a lot of the media and stuff, why do people keep bringing up 28 to 3? Do you know how much that bothers me? That's probably why they do <laughs> That's it. why they do it, man, <laughs> because there's nothing, oh like, my God. nothing like being able to stay, you know, it, it's almost cliche, to be honest with you. I don't even yeah. do it because it's, it's, it's kind of unoriginal. You know, because it's so easy. Right. It's too easy to say, hey, hey David, 28 to 3. <laughs> I mean, it's got, there's, you know, what else can you go to? It's so, it's such an easy one. But yeah. I'm actually grateful for, to 28 to 3. You know why? Because that erased the yeah, worst Super Bowl it takes choke. away the fact of the Super Bowl yeah. that we all went through. So, you know, thank you, David. I you know, yeah. appreciate everything you and the Falcons have done for our organization in this city and for me personally. <laughs> look, I look, look. Look, Norbert, I'll be quite honest. When we had that discussion a couple of years ago, I never, I mean, because it was the first time I was ever in that situation. But when you said that we would never forget about it no matter what, I'm not saying I took it for granted, but it is so true. Every time I turn on something or read something or about hear about possibilities down the road, whatever, I can't go back, I can't help but go back to 2016. I, I, before I even called you, Somebody posted on YouTube the last play of the Patriots and Falcons Super Bowl. Don't ask me why I clicked it. <laughs> it's like I'm a, like a glutton for punishment. Yeah, a uh, masochistic, self-inflicting uh, uh, <laughs> type of deal. I know what you mean. Yeah, I've oh watched God, that. But look, yeah. yeah to, me, to me, it's just horrible. But look, I, I have a question for you from an outsider looking in. This Matt Ryan contract, I don't know if you, if you have to deal with uh, Russell Wilson's contract in the upcoming years, but if you followed Atlanta, you know, there's still talk about you know, Matt Ryan signing his extension. Is he going to take a hometown discount? What can we do during the offseason to sign players? I, I, you know I love Matt Ryan, but I don't feel he's worth all this money to set us back. So, I mean, how do you look at these quarterbacks? And, and all I keep hearing is about, you know, you know, it's the price that quarterbacks are being paid the last couple of years. What do you, what do you look at as far as like quarterbacks and their contract and stuff like that? And Matt Ryan, what do you see about that situation? What do you, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I don't even know if I'm asking it right. No, I know what you're asking. And I, it's I, actually, a, it's a timely. I don't understand why it's signed and why the contracts are so high and why things are, going out the way it is. And Atlanta, and Atlanta in your chat, or it's Alana, she's like, Alana in the house. Okay. Talk to me, sir. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding this Matt Ryan contract. Well, uh, I mean, tell, so now is Matt Ryan, is his contract up this year or is it after this year? Um, I thought it was actually next year, but they're trying because Thomas Dimitrov said that he's trying to get it done now because I think when he, did, when he re-signed a couple years ago, I think it was 2000 and was it 15 or 14 he signed like it was like um i'm not saying if it was 108 or something like that but he's expected to get 50 plus more million yeah and they're not in any hurry to get this thing done so i really don't understand what's going on with with uh, the lack of signing his extension 
Well, we're, we're in, in a si- similar situation with Russell Wilson. All I can say is that for Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson, those guys are just chomping at the bit and drooling with what's been happening over the past year because with the quarterback c- right. contract just going off the roof, Kirk Cousins getting that guaranteed 84 or whatever million dollars for three years. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, it was like, that's it was like, Kirk like Cousins. It was 85 million, I think. It 84. Was. I, I think it was 84 point something. But, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. I think Russell Wilson and I think uh, Matt Ryan are better quarterbacks than them. So, you know, it's just this constant leapfrogging frogging game where you go oh he got this well i'm gonna have to get this but you know you're unless you've just got money out you know the yin yang to spend you're gonna hamstring your team right. we're already hamstrung for the past four years because of russell wilson's last deal which is cheap compared to what they are now he was getting 20 like 20 million a year um now that's gonna be even higher and we've got we're, we're we are at that point where we're gonna have to start talking about contract negotiation for russell wilson because i believe after this what year salary cap right now like, what do you have to spend the rest of the offseason? Uh, I don't know exactly where we're at. I know I'm pretty sure it's less than twenty million, but I'm not sure how much we've gained and lost less in the last 20. few moves. But it's it's we've yeah. been right on that edge of, you know, uh, between ten and twenty, you know, up and down depending yeah. on how the moves yeah, have yeah, gone. Yeah, because for me, Norb, the only thing that I've heard to this point is that being the fact that Kirk Cousins signed an eighty-four million guaranteed, which is ridiculous for him, or eighty-five million. The Falcons are at least going to go 86, but I have heard that Atlanta or Matt, and or Matt Ryan is ask Matt Ryan is asking for a hundred plus million guaranteed. And look, I love the dude. for three for you three know, years. I think he's over three oh, years. I, I mean, I I don't exactly know what the year is. I'm just so I'm just so shocked and jaw dropped with the with with the amount of money that he wants. Well, there's a there's true. a big difference between 100 million three years and 100 million uh, four years. You know what I mean? And, I don't know exactly and fully how the fully guaranteed. That's the big yeah. question. Is it fully guaranteed? Exactly. That's the big. That's the big thing with the Kirk Cousins deal. Is fully guaranteed. You yeah. know uh, that no, was the first time. They were looking at, at, at my Matt Ryan is getting 100 million guaranteed at least, not 86, not 87. Yeah, so I'm talking 100. I'm I'm not and surprised. As much as I love Matt Ryan, you know. I think that's too much guaranteed for a quarterback and any player in this league, to be quite honest with you. And I'm sure that it, it's it's a tough deal because as a fan, you want him uh, you want him back. I want Russell back. I can't see us without Russell Wilson for the next ten years. But what if he wants yeah. the same thing, you know? And what if he's what if the Seahawks aren't willing to do it? Is it there a possibility yeah. that next year or after next year there's a situation where we could be seeing a a you know a a rift in the organization and Russell Wilson's people that he actually considers leaving the Seattle to go somewhere else. I mean, I would just, I would be so well, when devastated. Exactly is it, well, let me ask you this. When does the time come up for Russell Wilson to actually have to start talking contract negotiation? Uh, I can't remember if it's after this season or if it's the, the year after I, I, I didn't peek at it. I know he's got at least one more year under contract and then maybe it's, yeah. after, it's the year after. So, well, while you're thinking about that, I think you see brand, let's see. Somebody asked me a question in your chat. Uh, no, is it gangrene David? Or okay. Somebody asked gangrene David something, but all I know is that, you know, Matt Ryan needs to get this done. I believe the Falcons are still Super Bowl contenders. I definitely do. I know the Falcons for those of you who follow me on here. Cause I, cause I know a lot of your fan base follows what I do and I appreciate it, but we re-signed um, uh, um, Ishmael. Um, I was totally disappointed that we couldn't re-sign Adrian Claiborne because my thinking was I didn't see a reason why, since we had little money to spend. You know, we released uh, Adrian, Adrian Claiborne at one point. We released uh, Don Terry Poe. We signed with uh, Kansas City. Claiborne wound up signing with the Patriots, for God's sakes. We let these other players go, and yet we wound up re-signing Ismael. You know, I just wish... Oh, my God. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out this money whole thing, but I just want the Falcons to get the right players in the right fit to contend for a Super Bowl championship. You know, Seattle, like I said, you and I have already talked. Seattle already has theirs, you know, Mm -hmm. despite blowing one already and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to figure, you know, people are talking about the Falcons draft and and this and that. I mean, I don't really – to me, the draft is all well and good, but I like veteran players. Now, when Seattle won their Super Bowl – Okay, a couple of years ago, was that predominantly on your your players that you drafted, or did y'all actually pick up? Because you got to refresh my memory. Did y'all pick up some players during that off season or two years prior, free agent wise, to help you get that title? Um, or what? Well, it was a mix How of both. I think it was more of the you know the 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 Legion of Boom guys. Those were all drafts um, right. that we'd gotten. But I'd say the names that come out as veteran guys who. 
you know, who helped out that year. Um, of course, uh, uh, shoot, name was on the tip of my tongue. Uh, oh, who's the who's the speedy guy we got from the Vikings? Oh, geez, can't believe, can't remember his was name. It, uh, um, oh, was it talking about, talking about the receiver? I'm talking about, you know, uh, guy scored a kickoff for the touchdown in the top of the of the beginning of the first half. Help me out, folks. Dude, I have no idea. You, dude, you, know you should about- know more than I would. Who? Uh, you know, um, gosh, dang it. Somebody help me out here. What you call it? Percy Harvin. Harvin. Percy my Harvin. God, thank you, uh, uh, Devin, Devin Peterson, Peterson. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, I'm happy like... birthday again to your niece, by the way. Um, she will be in that right. song, by the way. Uh, but yes, uh, yeah. uh, so Percy Harvin, of course, uh, was the big pickup. He didn't really help us that much because he was injured for most of the season, but he helped us out in the most important parts of uh, the season, which was the the end of the year. Right. Um, so he was one of the ones, uh, you know, he kind of uh, picked up. Um, we also had at the time, ah um, oh, crap, I've got all these names. You ever have those things where you have all these names that you can think of in a second, and then when you have to think about it, you can't remember? I'm trying to remember because because some people are telling me, you know, and and I keep trying to say, you know, the Patriots won all their Super Bowls. Yes, they had some ingrown talent, but a lot of the Patriots' Super Bowls were because of free agents they picked up. Green Bay Packers, free agents they picked up, you know. So, I mean, that's why people kept asking me, why am I so upset? The Falcons didn't have any money, but they weren't picking up any free agents. We have a lot of young talent. We got a lot of proven talent that are two and three years in, and you know we're capable of, you know we're capable of contending. But you still need that veteran leadership. One or two players who have had Super Bowl experience and or winning the title to boost your opportunity up. That's why I was so upset this off season. I don't care that we had little money to spend. You know, we, we were we were so close to signing Bennett, and that still irritates me. Now I don't know what what Bennett's status is. I don't know if he's going to get freed. I don't know if he's going to serve prison time or whatever, but that's a player that I really wanted. Yeah, I know and you did. I just, and, and, yeah, and why we couldn't make it happen was beyond me. You know, you got Richard Sherman, and it's kind of funny now that we laugh, that I can laugh about it because I kept telling you and, you know, Pete Carroll's gum and a couple of people like last year, we're going to pick the Seahawks. We're going to start picking some of their players. We had one realistic chance to get one. Maybe the Sherman was kind of, off the you know the radar, but he quickly signed with San Francisco, and I know to me he made a bad decision. I don't know if he tried to get back at you guys, but man, we can't catch a break, man. And you know, how do you feel about Sherman going to your perennial rival? And he didn't even test anybody else. He just went yeah. right on to him like two days later. They gave him an offer he couldn't refuse. Uh, yeah, there was actually a good article. There's actually a good article. Oh, so um, you speak in Godfather now, right? You speak in Italian mobster. <laughs> well, I read this. I read. I read. I did read this article um, uh, about right. Sherman. Talked about how the whole thing went down, and uh, you know that whole thing totally makes sense as far as friendly to the 49ers, a, real, a low risk deal for them, and all upside right. for Sherman if he can get out on the field. The only part that's a little bit, I wouldn't say bothersome, but the, the part that I guess is. Disappointing, I guess, is the fact that he, Sherman claims he went back to the Seahawks and said, here's what they're offering me. Do you want to counter? And if that's true, mm-hmm. then they said no. And basically, that really what they really meant is that we really are done with you. you know. And right. that means there was more to this than just cap room because I understood the cap implications. But if he was willing to really come right. back and say, hey, look, I'll come back and play for less, and they said no, well, then... I could see why he'd have a little bit of a grudge as a player. You yeah, because I, I heard that he was still waiting or you guys didn't quite offer. But, I mean, I just find it hard to believe he spent so many years with Seattle, so much rivalry with San Francisco, and he had, I mean, forget the fact Seattle and San Francisco. He had many other options, and he jumped on the first one, and it happened to be the team that you guys hate the most. So I, I, I think there was a little bit of, a little bit of hate there, a little bit of wanting to get back at y'all, you know. Cause, I, I mean, I'll be quite honest. I think that's a bad fit for him. Well, that's my the, own personal yeah. opinion because I, cause I don't think the 49ers are more than or less than two, three years away from contending. I don't care what anybody says. I, I they, hope they you, a lot. I, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But he's also a West Coast guy, you know, went to school at Stanford, so he's got roots on the West Coast. So yeah. I could see him wanting to stay okay. on the West Coast side. So if the 49ers gave yeah. him a deal that he was looking for and he didn't feel like he needed to look any further east to do it, I can understand that too. And maybe the 49ers color thing is yeah. just an additional little extra little fun thing you can right. play with, you know. Well, that, we'll see what happens with that, will. man. I'm still kind of surprised, but... Like I said, I mean, I mean, I know you got some callers on here, but like I've been busy. But I wanted to say a couple things. 
for everybody again for my couple of years, you know, interacting with Norb and everybody. I appreciate the love that you and guys in the chat has give, have given me on, on my channels. I appreciate it. Is David in Atlanta? It's a new one. And for people who know me who may be listening, sub Norcam. And I will keep in contact with you, man, about the uh, the visit up there. I'm just, again, waiting on the uh, schedule to come right. out. So hopefully Seattle, Atlanta, or, it, 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 I mean, it may not even be a, a Seattle, Atlanta game. I still want to come up there, so I'll keep in contact with you. And, hey, man, let's keep it going, man. You know, yeah. we'll yep. see what happens, man. I wish you guys all the best. All right. Well, you too, man. Super Bowl in uh, Atlanta, you know, so I would be more than happy to have a reason to go to Atlanta come February next year, you know. That may be That's a stretch okay, at this point. Before we go, let, let me, okay, but let me ask you this. Even though, I mean, no, no team has ever won a Super Bowl hosting, you know, in their own city. Mm-hmm. Realistically speaking, you know, forget the draft. You don't anything as of right now. What chance would you give Atlanta to make it to Mercedes-Benz in February and win it? What I think you got a pretty good shot, considering the fact. Well, you know, you were in the playoffs last year. You know, you got out of the first round, made it to the divisional. Um, you know, I'd say <laughs> maybe a little bit better yeah, well, shot than we do right that, now. <laughs> hey, 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 Norb, somebody in your chat said, I think his name was Most Wanted, said, watch the Falcons sign Michael Crabtree, and he catches a winning touchdown in the NFC Championship game against Sherman. <laughs> that would be sweet. Yeah, no, there was people talking about getting Crabtree up here just so I could do the complete reverse and uh, have that. Yeah, that well, he hasn't signed with anybody out. yet. He, he hasn't, hasn't signed yet. with anybody it yet. Could, I guess that but situation know, could happen man. with either team. So, all right, man. Well, right, you, man. you've managed hey, to completely hey, take hey, over my lines. Thing, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for calling in. Actually, it was fun. It was a good conversation. Right, we'll brother, have to do it man. again. Have a good one later. All right, you too. All right. All right. Well. Thanks to David in Atlanta. He pretty much took up the rest of my time because I said I had to go at 7 o'clock. So <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I really meant to get to a bunch more of the calls that you guys have been hanging on, and I, I apologize. I couldn't do it. But I do have to wrap this up. i got to be somewhere in like two minutes. I'm, I'm going to be late. So um, we'll do this again next week. Um, I appreciate all you guys in the chat room and those of you who hung on. I saw. I, I always apologize for not uh, taking the calls. I end up talking. I've got to get better. I, mean, I think I'm going to have to do is set a little timer. And I'm going to set it so for every time someone calls, I put like a two or three minute thing. And then as soon as the alarm goes off, I got to hang up and move it on, you know, because I just feel bad leaving you guys out there on, on hold. So I apologize for that. I see Nita even jumped on the call, who I saw over at Spokane this, this past weekend at my uh, girls' volleyball tournament. We'll have to talk about this next time, Nita. I'm sorry. But um, I got to run. But thank you, guys. Uh, we'll talk about this again. Uh, I try to do this every week on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. So uh, let's do it next week. Um, And uh, soon we'll be talking about the draft coming up. It's going to be a big one, big one for lots of teams, especially for the Seahawks. All right. uh, Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. And uh, let's keep this thing rolling along. I appreciate it very much. Go Hawks.